Even last year, there was a fantastic sonar contact made in Urquhart Bay by Marcus Atkinson. On his sonar screen, it's 60 feet below his boat and it's five feet wide, passing underneath the boat. On its own, it's not hard evidence, but it's hard evidence that there's something unexplained in the deep waters of Loch Ness. But we're looking for the answers to why thousands of people down through the centuries now have described animals swimming about. That warrants investigation in itself. But I've seen one thing like a torpedo going through the water and I thought, right, next time I see that I'm gonna film it. I'm still waiting for that second sighting, I must admit. Supported by high-tech drone technology, the latest in Nessie research, and eager amateur filmmaker Thomas Park, I headed north to pick up the search for this most majestic of beasts. Along the way I would be speaking to colourful local characters, esteemed experts and fellow Nessie hunters from around the world in my quest to fulfil a childhood dream and solve one of the greatest mysteries of our time. A little settler, needed. Off to Inverness today, Jay. What are we doing out there? We're gonna find Nessie. We're going to live a childhood dream and discover that mysterious beast. After a nervy, slightly too rushed pit stop at Gatwick's Red Lion Tavern, we boarded our easy jet and took to the skies for a 500 mile voyage to Inverness, Scotland. We will be spending two nights at Darroch View, a two star bed and breakfast in Invermortian, an up and coming region on the west bank of the loch. While there, we will be sampling hearty Scottish ales, partying with fine lockside lasses, and hearing tall tales of Nessie hunts from years gone by. So we just had uh, our first meeting with the owner of the B&B. Took great pleasure in shooting down every dream we had about the uh, trip. No taxis around here, there's no bar around here. There's a shop and one hotel. I asked her <laughs> where she went out to get pissed. They don't. So we're basically confined to uh, this room for the next uh, 36 hours. Or as far as we can walk. Um, apparently there's a nice waterfall though, so we're going to go and check that out in a second. And then, uh, yeah, we got a table booked at the Glen Morrison Arms at 8 o'clock. Glen Morgan Arms Hotel. The night starts here. We've just been kicked out of the only pub in town at, what? 10.25? I thought it was going to be some sort of raucous little road trip affair. What is it now? Back to that little den for a cup of tea and a... What? Where's the footage? I don't know, it worries me. Tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow on the on the lock at 10 a.m. So let's go. Let's get our sleep. Let's reconvene at the breakfast table. Who knows what tomorrow brings? Some lovely haggis just to kick start the day. Can you talk me through what's in haggis? What's in haggis? A haggis is. What's in haggis again? It's uh, heart, lung, liver. Heart, lung. Sheep. Lamb. Mm. I don't know. It tastes like organs. We go, day two. Got my little fleece on. <laughs> Beautiful day. Oh. Big day today. Today we really kickstart the hunt for Nessie um, and I've arranged for a boat to pick us up from the lock. I think if we're going to find him, we've got to get down to his level. 
we've got the speed we need um, to match Nessie because one thing about the Loch Ness Monster, if reports are to be believed to be true, um, he can, he or she, can cover up to 35 miles an hour. Sir, so you're on the rib trip? That's the one, yeah. Cool, I'll get your ticket printed off. Fantastic. Two adults. You could you give us uh, kind of your view on the monster? Have you, the, have you had any sightings the, before? The best or? way to see the monster, I mean, in personal experience, yeah. is you have to drink at least a bottle of whiskey. OK, so I, I'm here with Tony, um, All right. legendary skipper of Loch Ness. When was the last time you saw Nessie? Uh, last time, I think well, last year, we had a decent sonar contact. Uh, nothing I would say is a neck and head coming up. You've not seen the neck and head yet? No. Who knows what's lying there? I mean, more people have been to the moon than the bottom of this place. Exactly. Yeah, so we're, we're just suiting up now. Feel good in there. We're coming for you. You want me to say, let's rock? Yeah. Let's rock. We hit the open water in the Ness Force One, and straight away we were alerted to some unusual activity further down the log. So we're heading on the way to Inverness. Um, there's been a reporting of a sighting about halfway down. We reckon we can get there in 20 minutes. And let's see what we can see. We fucking love to see an eagle. <laughs> what eagle? As we approached the coordinates in question, the boat's sophisticated sonar system went into overdrive. Suddenly, the ripples in the water gave way to something much larger. Surely we hadn't solved the mystery so soon. Any sightings of the beast yet? No confirmed sightings, no. We're here at Urquhart Castle. Um, Described as well, the, the world's oldest cafe by our skipper just now. Been around since the. Uh, this is. I should have been listening more, shouldn't I? In the shadow of Urquhart Castle, our skipper told us a tale of a legendary Nessie hunter named Sir Steve Felton. He had recently been recognised by the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest consecutive spell hunting for the Loch Ness monster. Steve Felton. So he lives. He lives he on lives the lock. On the lock. Yeah. Right down there, in the shadow of there, the top right-hand corner of the lock. He sells these little model Nessie things. That's oh, we've got to go. We've got to go and see him. If we're being serious about yeah. finding this monster. Yeah. Steve's Sounds the man. Like, he's yeah. the keeper of the vault. He must have a few sightings of Drew Felton. Uh, no, he's seen one thing. He's worth a little chat to. After a bracing yet unsuccessful hunt, we headed back to dry land and the global hub of Nessie hunting, Fort Augustus. Before tracking Steve down, we wanted to soak up some local culture and speak to some fellow Nessie enthusiasts. This is the uh, Lock Inn, uh, rated on TripAdvisor as the third best establishment in Loch Ness. Let's check it out. And you're a local of uh, these parts? Yeah, born and bred. So how many times have you laid eyes on this mythical Nessie? I haven't. Have you had any sightings since you were here? Sorry. So, uh, what's your name? Having a nice, uh, yeah. nice ale. Just about past midday. So I'm not going to be in a porn film with him, never. Have you seen him yet? Monster. How can you see monster? Nessie, have you seen him? No. Wait a minute. What are you doing it for? You haven't seen him. No. One of these things that will never, never be known, maybe. Yeah. I've never seen it personally. Have you, Dave? I just spent the night in the hills. Front page of the Inverness Courier. Nessie discovered. What's your reaction? It's about time. I've got a very small head, so I'm not sure if that, that works or not. That's all right, that. I could see myself wearing that. Have you spotted it yet? No. Are you a believer? In what? I believe there's got to be a monster there somewhere, isn't there? Life's not worth living otherwise. What do you expect to while you're here? I don't know. Uh, my name's Jeff. Jeff. Are you a believer yourself? Uh, no. Yes. I take it you're, uh, you're hunting for the monster? Of course. Tourist trapping. Over a tasty single malt in the lock-in tavern, we have received some promising news. Apparently Steve was available to talk that very afternoon in his caravan in Doris, 
just 25 miles north of Fort Augustus. We jumped straight into fear and set off immediately. This was a massive moment in the hunt and we both knew it. What do you think he's going to say when we get there? We've travelled a long way to be here. Yeah, I think he's going to take us in. He's going to recognise that we're serious hunters like himself. Yeah, he's forthcoming to us. Yeah, we speak to Loch Ness Steve. He's the Guinness World Record holder for longest consecutive stint hunting for Nessie. He lives in that camper van in the car park. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's the man to speak to. I'm nervous. There's a lot of people around. Um, I don't know, because we've got to be very careful here. We don't want to do anything to upset this man, because this is his life. How often do people will come down here uh, wanting to film you? Uh, the second this week. So we were sent here by a guy who took us on a little cruise this morning. Uh, the guy who took a photo of Nessie. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, if you want to find out about Nessie, you've got to come and speak to Steve. Very good. Friend of yours? Yeah, yeah. very much so, yeah. Good, good man. Yeah. Um, so how long, how long have you been on the hunt for then? 27 years. A world record? Apparently so. So how often are you out actually hunting? It varies from decade to decade. Yeah. You know, there's no pattern to watching for Nessie, really. And what's, that, what's been the most memorable moment of those 27 years? Yeah. One big disturbance at the other end. Yeah. And we couldn't tell what that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're just waiting for that second sight in now. Yeah. yeah. And make all the models, yes. Yeah. And when did you start doing that? When I first arrived here full time. They bring in the money that keeps me yeah. hunting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, You're cool. going to buy one, when you, Rico? Yeah, I don't have any cash on me, that's the only. Uh, take cars. Take cars car as well. Great. The meeting of two Nessie scholars hadn't gone as planned. I walked back to the fear feeling frustrated at the lack of rapport and answers. The only thing I come away with was a plasticine Nessie model. It felt like we'd hit a real dead end. Where are we now? We're at Nessie land now. Um, spirits are low. We embarrassed ourselves in front of Steve. We belittled him. This trip's mainly about searching for lost youth. We showed ourselves to be cynical old men. Now we're going to Nessie land. We're going to put that right. We're going to get some facts about Nessie. We're going to have some fun with Nessie. We're going to put this show back on the road. Let's go. I had a bit of a rocky day yesterday. I think we ended up a down day. I think we'd be wrong to concentrate solely on the down, down points, of which there were numerous, but, but the sun's rising, you know, the lock's still there. Can you describe Steve in three words after a night's sleep? Um, a troubled man, is how I describe him. I think, yeah, you can easily put the blame on us, but he didn't give us the time of day. Can you ever see you and Steve rectifying a relationship? No, I can't ever see me rectifying my relationship with Steve. And what I resent is the constant questions about Steve. This isn't a documentary about finding Steve, OK? It's a documentary about finding Nessie. And you've become obsessed with Steve, and you're peppering me with questions about him. I've just woken up, and straight away it's back on Steve. I I'm dreaming about him last night. I'm sick of the <laughs> All right? And we get to stop hunting for Nessie. He'll never stop. I never want to see Steve again. And I'm sick of questions about him. Let's just enjoy this view. Our time on the lock had come to an end, but in a way, the lessons I'd learned would last forever. After two days on Nessie's tail, I come to realize that it wasn't actually a discovery that was the important part. It was the thrill of the chase itself. I might not have discovered a 65 million year old monster, but I have rediscovered something else, a childlike sense of adventure. I had a lot of fun too. It was fun, wasn't it, Tom? Yeah, it was great, mate.